Abraham Lincoln said that people are about as happy as they make up their minds to be. So you have to make up your mind to be happy. However, it comes like this if you have an unbounded enthusiasm for life. Oh, what a joyous adventure is living. Never let it lose its luster. A joyous adventure of living. Her beginnings were very humble. Uh, she started off uh, living in abject poverty in Sherman, Texas during the Depression. She uh, had married early and had two small children, really in the deepest throes of the Great Depression. So Mary pursued and was awarded a scholarship from the Rotary Club in Sherman, Texas to come to Dallas to go to school. So she has a scholarship in hand, but no money no means, no job, no place to stay. So he left my mother, Ruth, and my uncle Don with the relatives there. She took the train to Dallas, Texas. Mother came up on a Saturday night so that she could spend the night and uh, go to the First Baptist Church. And She went and presented herself to Dr. Truitt and he said, well, what can we do to help you? And she said, I need a reference for business school, and I need a home to stay in that I could earn my room and board. And uh, he looked around and found a couple of willing faces, and uh, my mother was on her way. She worked very hard. She was very successful in selling. But in 1957, um, she decided to start a business uh, in her garage called Home Interiors and Gifts. I wanted a business where women could develop their genius and still be home when the kids got home from school. Through her hard work and through Don and, and my mother's hard work, uh, Home Interiors became an internationally renowned success. Um, uh, by the mid-80s, the company had 35,000 salespeople and was doing hundreds of millions of dollars a year in sales. Uh, Mary herself had been awarded a Horatio Alger Award. She was also a tremendous uh, woman of faith. Mom said, if you find it in the book of Proverbs to do it, then do it. If you find it in the book of Proverbs not to do it, then don't do it. And anything in between, we don't try. <laughs> She never forgot what it was like to really be very financially without. And she never forgot what it was like when your children are hungry and, and you know that you have to provide for them. And, and those things, I think, endeared my mother to people because she really understood where they came from. The same year she founded the company, she was diagnosed with cervical cancer. She was fortunate to find a physician here in Dallas named John T. Malams. Dr. Malams had been doing research in cancer, and he believed he could make a radiant implant for her and treat her cancer. And he did so, and she had a complete response to her disease, and without which she would never have formed the company. She would never have been, had her business success. In 1984, her cancer returned. quickly assemble a really a dream team of cancer physicians. Well, immediately it became evident that their plan uh, was led with treating her with a platinum-based chemotherapy. She asked Dr. Malams, Dr. Malams, in 1957, when you were contemplating my treatment, did we not discuss the possible use of platinum-based chemotherapy if the implants were to fail? And he said, yes, Mary. And she said, well, how are we still talking about that today? And she really felt like they had really not advanced the field in that time interval. And so that became her drive to create the Mary Crowley Cancer Research Centers and give it a very unique focus, which we carry through to this today. We do not charge our patients for our treatment in uh, clinical trials, but we do want people and in industries and other foundations to help contribute to it so that we together can make a difference and that we can see in maybe even in my lifetime a cure for cancer and that's what we're really excited about. Success is not money in the bank or the car that you drive or the clothes that you wear or your status in the community but success is really the ratio between what you have done and what you can do.